There's a star for everyone Brightly shining in the sky It seems to be a part of our destiny Every night I eagerly Watch them all go drifting by But I can't seem to find Sing so well. Mm. Peggy, Peggy was a regular. Remember the George Goebel television show where you'd say, here now is pretty perky Peggy King? Yeah. This all is the lady. Years, all those years yeah. passed. Did you enjoy working with George? Sure. He's terrific. World's greatest sense of But everybody thinks that I was hired for that show because I'm small, and that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. I was hired for that show before he ever met me. And when we met at the Brown Derby for the first time, and he stood up to shake hands with me. He was so thrilled because he's about an inch taller than I <laughs> George is not taller than many people. No, he was so thrilled. I mean, you know, I think that's why I really, they hung on to me. If you could say something to George right now, what would it be? What would it be? I love you. I love you, George. I always loved him. I always well, loved him. go ahead and talk because he's listening in. He's on the phone right now. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. George? 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 Oh, Sorry about that. No, no, of course not. How how are you, George? I'm fine. How are you, Peg? You want to get an act together, and we'll get a barn, and we'll do you know dance barn dance and all that. We can do any any place, you know. You name it, you know, and uh, and I'll be there. All I want is uh, we'll do a show, and and I just I don't need the money either. You know, I'm just gonna say, Mr. Goldus close. Uh, first by after six and before six. So we're <laughs> George, where are you now and what are you doing? Well, Besides we're talking about you. Encino now. Oh, you're at home. At home, yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, George. I've been sitting here with bated breath, Mike. <laughs> with bated breath? Yeah, and that and, you, and your breath has been bated a lot. <laughs> hey, easy. George, remember the time we were standing at, I don't know, I was working at Mr. Kelly's in Chicago and 
and we went somewhere to eat after you came picking up and we were standing sort of fooling around uh, forehead we to forehead. Right? We were standing forehead to forehead. Like on you did on the show. Like we did on the show. Just fooling around. Well, that too. No. And a drunk came by and looked at us like he couldn't believe what was happening. You thought it was the cover of TV Guide. There we were, you know, forehead to forehead. Well, you know, we remember? haven't seen each other for about a year and a half or two years. I listen, I'd like to see you, kid. I really As a matter of fact, I wish you'd put your head to the, to your forehead to the phone, you know, yeah. and then I can talk better. Let's see. <laughs> you know, one time uh, we had a joke that Hal Cat wrote, and Peggy came in in a big fur coat, and they had the snow falling down, and a St. Bernard. She, yeah. How do you like this uh, coat, George? I said, it's great. She said, I made it myself. I said, gee, and you had enough fur left over to make a dog. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Jo George, may I, where did that pretty perky Peggy King come from, that introduction? Well, there again, it was uh, Hal Catter, you know. And, uh, because I'm not first, perky at all. Was he that? was the first one that uh, started calling me Little Bitty Buddy. And, yeah, and yeah, Uncle John, Uncle of, John Scott Trotter. And oh, yeah, Uncle everybody John. Everybody had a name. And, uh, and oh, we had a great group. We also had Bud Yorkin, who has gone on to very big fame in the movies as director. It was I was just going to ask you, whatever happened to him? Then? I didn't know whatever uh, happened to him, George. I really don't. What I want to know is, when does George Goble come east? We want to have you. Well, we were going to come, like, uh, this week sometime, but you moved someplace. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> didn't you? No, no, I haven't moved. I'm in Philadelphia. Well, I know, but I mean, you were changing studios or something? Oh, that was a long that was time ago. ago. Four or five George, years ago, been? George. <laughs> oh, well, that's when I was going to come over and see you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was there one time. I know that. You were, uh, I think you had a, a death in the family or you were ill or something. I think they took my appendix out at that time. Yeah, was, well. Uh, well, you were certainly ill then. How do you, how do you feel? Super. <laughs> I feel great and much better having spoken with you. Thank you, George, for the surprise. They came out all right, didn't they, Mike? Everything came out fine. Peggy? <laughs> Thank you, George. I don't care if Alice is listening or not. I love you, too. I love you, too, George. Bye, Peggy. Bye-bye, George. Bye. Oh, what a surprise. You have prepared a fashion show. Yes. Uh, and some music <clears throat> that you wrote. She wrote the music. Actually, I wrote, we wrote, uh, Eddie Samuels and I wrote this just for your show, because uh, in truth, uh, you know, I'm sure that everybody knows this, when you write an industrial show, you steal other people's melodies and you put your own what, whatever you can to them. You cannot do that on television. I didn't find that out until two days ago, you understand? <laughs> so these were written specifically for the Mike Douglas show, and these okay. are a couple of my husband's companies. This dress that I'm wearing is, is, is uh, we have a ladies' company now. This is called Lady Six. Oh, that's marvelous. Yeah, I kind of like it. We're going to see the fashions and hear that music we spoke of right after this. Be right back. <laughs> I'm John Stossel with a report on how... I would like to introduce you to my friend and my co-writer, Mr. Eddie Samuels. Uh, actually, Eddie has been on the show so many times, I think he's been on with four other people before me. That's right. Who were they? Shecky Green, mm -hmm. Jimmy Rogers, Eddie Fisher, and Danny Thomas. Well, in good company. Um, this is a little waltz that Eddie wrote a long time ago, and we adapted it for this particular company. As gentle as snow that softens the winter weather, as soft as a breeze that touches you a feather Our coats of leather and suede are truly the finest ones made for you and they're falls on a field of heather a gentle caress when love 
lovers are first together Just like a sweet serenade will unfold you in leather and sweet bird daily makes for you sweet serenade will enfold you in leather and suede bird paley makes for you The point that we are making in this song The point that we are making Is that in our tuxedos you belong Getting to our tuxedos And there is something we would like to say Listen here, listen here, lend an ear Tuxedos made us what we are today The elegance that you are seeing here The elegance you're seeing The same perfection every single year Ain't that the perfection Has made our happy little company Our happy company need some extras we'll have them for you quicker than a breeze you'll have them pronto and we would like to emphasize this thought so pay attention that everything you ever need we got we got we got we got that everything And need assistance with the chicks We'll show you all the tricks And after six Josh Logan has directed so many musicals So many Broadway musicals It's hard to believe uh, some were hits and some weren't, but there are some memorable songs from those shows, and we like to recall them for you. I've got one from Camelot, made famous by my friend Robert Gullett. If ever I would leave you, it wouldn't be in summer, seeing you in summer, I never would go. sunlight your lips red as flame your face with a luster that puts gold to shame but if I ever leave you how could it be in springtime knowing how in spring I'm bewitched by you so Summer, winter, or fall No, never could I leave you At all Peggy 
Rhodes is from a Rodgers and Hart musical that wasn't quite so successful, but listen to this song called Nobody's Heart. Nobody's heart belongs to me. I hope who cares? Nobody writes his songs to me. No arms belong to me. That's the least of my cares. I may be sad at times and disinclined to play, but it's not bad at times to go your own sweet way. Nobody's heart belongs to me. No arms feel strong to me. I admire the moon as a moon, just a moon. Nobody's heart belongs to me. Seduction, robbery, and arson. What a day I could choke my grandmother with her shawl. I could turn Republican in the fall. Oh, it gets absurd, gets, gets and, absurd and, and absurder, absurder, so I say. If you care to join me in murder, partner, it's the loveliest day. Barbara Feldman is going to sing a song everyone thinks is called I'm as corny as Kansas in August, but actually it's called A Wonderful Guy and it's from South Pacific. What else? Barbara? in August, high as a flag on the 4th of July. If you'll excuse an expression I use, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with a wonderful guy. Miss America has a song from All American that expresses how she feels about the good old USA. Susan? Logan, Peggy King, Miss America of 1978, Barbara Feldon, and my co-host Hal Linden. Join Hal and me tomorrow, but we'll have an exclusive interview with the parents of Karen and Quinlan. See you then. Bye-bye. This factory